Good news, good news. Always good news. Good news, good news. There is good news today. No matter what else is happening in the world. Always good news. Good news. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news, no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Jim Dearman, your host for Good News Today. Thanks so much for joining us again here in the Good News Room, where we take you back in time with our surroundings and back to the timeless Word of God with our teaching. And that teaching today, let me tell you about it. We'll start, of course, as we always do, with our devotional time, which consists of our Scripture reading, beautiful singing segment, and then we're back for a brief study of that Scripture. And today that Scripture comes from the Old Testament book of Joshua. We're going to look at the first nine verses of chapter 1, and specifically talking about uh, leadership, as there is a transition in Israel's leadership from Moses to, to Joshua, and some lessons that we can glean from that transition of, of God's leaders at that time. So that's what's coming up on our program today. Glad again that you have joined us. Let's read together now from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go.
We are back for the study portion of our devotional time. We are looking today at Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And as we mentioned earlier, we're going to stress some points about leadership here because what we're reading about here in this text is the transition of leadership, the leadership of God's people Israel from Moses to uh, Joshua, who obviously Joshua had spent a great deal of time uh, with Moses and really was well prepared to become God's leader. But that's the point. Uh, he had to prepare, and we need to be uh, preparing leaders today in the Lord's church. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the text once again. Verse 1 again, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Well, let's stop right there, and that's a stark reminder that uh, great leaders do not live forever. Uh, Moses, of course, lived to be 120 years old, but even if our leaders today in the Lord's church live to be 120, they are going to die unless the Lord comes again. And so the point is there needs to be an awareness of that very fact and uh, preparation uh, so that we always have strong leadership in the Lord's church. Now when we talk about leadership in the Lord's church, we're talking about the New Testament pattern for leadership. Uh, the organizational structure of the New Testament church must be according to the New Testament pattern, just the way it was in the first century, in other words, when the church first came into existence. Well, that organizational structure uh, involves elders who oversee uh, the flock, individual congregations. They do not, do not have authority over several congregations. That's an, uh, um, that's a, an apostate uh, organizational structure that grew out of uh, departures from the New Testament pattern in the first century. But having restored that New Testament pattern in the Lord's Church today, we have elders who are overseeing the local congregation, deacons, the special servants who work under them. Of course, the preacher uh, is simply uh, another member who has a special uh, assignment. That is, he preaches, but um, he's not a deacon. He's, uh, he works under the oversight of the, of the elders and, of course, all of the flock, the members of the Lord's Church. And they are to be subject, of course, every member, to the leadership. The elders are to be qualified, and the qualifications are set forth for us in the New Testament, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and in Titus chapter 1. And when men meet those qualifications and have that desire to serve in that wonderful work of overseeing the flock of God, then they are appointed to the leadership. But the point is, those leaders do not live forever. And so we need to be very much aware of um, instilling within the hearts of our young men in the congregation the desire to prepare themselves to become uh, elders and to become uh, deacons uh, in the Lord's church, those who are those special servants carrying out various uh, responsibilities. Uh, you can't improve upon the Lord's pattern for the church in any respect, and that includes the organizational structure of it. We recognize that that organizational pattern has been violated uh, and is being violated in the various uh, denominational uh, bodies. But our plea is, as you well know, if you're a regular uh, member of our audience, is that we plead with people to get back to the New Testament and follow it in every respect. And that includes how we organize uh, the church. But we're reminded here, Moses, my servant, is dead, a reminder that great leaders do not live forever. Now here's the further instruction then that uh, God gives to uh, Joshua. Now go over, this is still verse 2, Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. So this involves now the land promise. And he says, uh, the ch Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. That's reading through uh, the verse, uh, verse 3 of Joshua uh, chapter 1. Now this reminds us that God is faithful to His promises. He promised this, He said uh, to Moses, I'm going to uh, keep that promise and I am going to fulfill the promise to give you the land. Now what was involved in that land promise? Well, verse 4 tells us, From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, 
all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun. That's the Mediterranean Sea he's speaking of here. All of this, he says, shall be your territory. Now this is an important point because uh, there is a false doctrine, uh, very uh, prevalent uh, tragically, but false nonetheless, called premillennialism. And a part of that uh, premillennial doctrine is that the uh, land promise is still yet to be fulfilled and that ultimately God is going to uh, fulfill the land promise which was never uh, fulfilled. Well, that's just simply false. And this is a text here that uh, we can show to prove that theory to be false. He says, from the great river Euphrates uh, over to uh, the Mediterranean, uh, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea toward the going down of the sun, the river Euphrates, all right, so that's about oh, 60,000 square miles of territory. And it was given to Israel. The land promise, in other words, has been fulfilled. Listen to um, Joshua 21, verses 43 through 45. So the Lord gave to Israel, notice it, so the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Well, since all came to pass, including the land promise, therefore premillennialism is false in this point and in all other points for that matter. Premillennialism claims that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back and, and establish a literal throne for uh, a literal thousand years reign. And that is completely false. He reigns now over His kingdom. Well, notice uh, briefly some other points here in this text. Uh, God goes on to reassure Joshua, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Then he says, this book, this book of the law, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's reading from verses 5 through verse 9, the final verse of our text. And the admonition here is, follow the law. Now, for Joshua, that was the law of Moses. The old law, the law that included the Ten Commandments, that law has been done away. We're no longer subject to that law, as we have often said right here. But we are under the law of Christ, the New Testament. And the principle here is certainly valid for us. Don't turn from it to the right hand or to the left. That's a good admonition, isn't it? It's from God. We're not to turn from the law of Christ to the right or to the left. We're not to bind where that law doesn't bind. We're not to loose where that law does not loose. But we're simply to follow the law of Christ, which is the New Testament. Can we do that? Yes. Can we understand what the will of the Lord is? Absolutely. And we must follow it faithfully. We must be biblically balanced, speaking where the Bible speaks, and being silent where the Bible is silent. Matthew 6.33 tells us we're to seek first the kingdom of God, the church, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Well, this is a great text. It does remind us of the importance of constantly preparing men to step into the role of God's leaders as elders in the church of our Lord.